and welcome to this month's Wild Ones Book Club. Sorry about the cat butt. Today I am going to be starting with the fiction choice, which was We Spread by Ian Reid. So this is about Penny who is aging and ends up finding herself in an aged care facility and is sort of losing her grip on reality. But is she? I think it's about like the destructive effects of aging and I'm guessing paranoia and things that can sometimes come from it. It's supposed to be a bit horror-esque, I think, from what I've gathered from other YouTubers' reviews, but I don't know a lot about it. I try to go into books fairly ignorant so that I'm not projecting predetermined uh, opinions or perspectives on it. I just want to go in completely fresh and a blank slate so I can be surprised by whatever may come. But let's start reading this. Hello, so I'm about halfway through We Spread. The aged care facility seems dodgy AF. So there's only four residents in this facility and two caretakers. And it's we're at the point where we're wondering, is Penny suffering maybe from like dementia or Alzheimer's and confusion? Or is this aged care facility seriously nefarious? I'm leaning towards something weird is happening and they're sort of experimenting on the residents. It just makes me sad that Penny has <laughs> no one in her life, no friends, no family that could come and check on her. Um, oh, I've got so much cat hair in my face right now because I'm honestly really, really worried about her. I don't like think this is a safe place at all and I just want her to get out. So yeah, I the main chick, Shelly. <laughs> Sylvie um, seems the worst and she had, like has a background in biology and I feel like I feel like she's using the residents as experiments. Um, the writing style is really easy to read. It feels very fast paced. The spacing is really big in this book. As you can see, like there's just a lot of spaces between sentences. So it is a fast read. But yeah, I'm a bit worried for, for Penny. Okay, so I have to do my review here because little kitty cat sleeping. Okay, so I'm going to start by saying also Penny's husband sounded like an absolute dick who just wanted to smother her light. I'm just putting that out there as well. You don't really understand what the heck's going on with this. Um, it's very confusing and not only because obviously Penny's confused but nothing's really elucidated. We don't really find out what Shelley's been doing. She was speaking to a person I think it might be Penny's late husband. Maybe he didn't actually die and he's orchestrated this as well. I'm not really sure. Penny finally does get outside, but then it's alluded to that she's killed herself. And it's just very unsatisfying. Um, she's left behind some painting as well that is supposed to help everyone that's still there, but I don't understand how it would. It's very weird. Uh, I think Shelley was somehow trying to extend life by using the residents' lives to do that. I don't know how. This is just very confusing. It, like I said, it's easy to read and it was interesting, but I'm left very unsatisfied. So what would I give this? Three stars. Um, I thought maybe it was just going to be a look at aging and sort of the deterioration of your ability to remember anything and losing passages of time. But then there's this twist with this place that they're using the residents there to do like scientific experiments. So because that was included in it, I was hoping then to find an answer of what was actually going on at this facility. I really don't think it's just Penny losing her mind. I think something was going on there, but do we know? No, we do not. So yeah, I've given this three stars. Hello. One sec, I'm on a, I'm on a cat toy. So today I am going to be reading How to Be Present. Embrace the Art of Mindfulness to Discover Peace and Joy Every Day by Sophie Golding. I'll just show you the inside because it's 
it's a colour book. So we've got different pictures. I think it's going to be a very easy, quick read. As you can see, probably won't take me long. So give it a go. It's got just about tips on incorporating mindfulness practices into your routine, I'm reading it as part of the Wild Ones Book Club. So let's get started. Hello, I've just finished reading How to Be Present by Sophie Golding, which is about mindfulness and finding joy in the everyday. <laughs> Sorry about the jingles, I've got a little kitten. Um, I'm not going to rate this one. It is very, very basic. I'll just show you some more pages again so you can see what it's like. It's lovely that it's colour. It's very easy to read. Um, it touches on all the like basic tenets of mindfulness and things like meditation, breath work, moving the body, laughter, play, curiosity. There is no new information here for me personally. I think this is a great book maybe to give young teens. Um, it's a great introduction to, you know, certain principles and ideas of well-being. But for anybody who's done any sort of reading on well-being and mindfulness practices, yeah, it's there's nothing new to be to be learned and it's a bit too simple. But I think this will be a great introduction for my kids um, to presence, how to be present, mindfulness, well-being, taking care of oneself in this world. So I will definitely um, pass it on to my kids when they're a little bit older to read. But for me, it just, yeah, it was, it was just a bit too basic. But I still enjoyed reading it. It was just a nice reminder to implement some more of these practices into my daily life as well as like things like mindful eating and all that jazz. So those were the books from this month's Wild Ones book club. She's going to use a bathroom on camera. Let me, let me <laughs> I'll just stand here. Uh, so these are the other two selections that everyone has voted for in the polls for nonfiction and fiction and I'll see you in next month's Wild Ones book club with my opinions on those.